So, uh, yeah, my name is Angus Thomas, I'm an engineering manager at Red Hat, and uh, I worked on Red Hat's, oh, no, so excuse me, let me fix my screen sharing. Yeah, I worked on uh, engineering Red Hat's OpenStack product, specifically a product called the OpenStack Director. But the thing I want to talk to you all about today is the Triple O project, which is an upstream open source project of OpenStack, and it's the foundation that we use to build Director. But it's the tri Triple O itself that I want to focus on this afternoon. Triple O, um, represented by this wonderful owl, stands for OpenStack on OpenStack. And essentially, what the project is about is reusing OpenStack components and technologies as the underlying infrastructure that you use to manage the deployment and lifecycle of your actual real world OpenStack deployment. I'll get into that more in, in detail, but OpenStack on OpenStack is a multi layered thing. A quick summary of what I'm going to talk about. Uh, high level vision, quick overview of the OpenStack components and how we use them, the Triple O concept, how Triple O uh, goes through the process of defining and deploying a scalable, configurable OpenStack which is actually suited to customers and users, real world use cases. Some of the particular features that we've got right now, some of the things which are on the roadmap, and then questions if we have time. Um, I'll try not to hang around if it doesn't make that possible. So, the mission of Triple O is full lifecycle management for an OpenStack deployment, which really breaks down into three different areas the planning that needs to happen before the deployment actually takes, case, uh, takes place, rather. So your network technology, set of uh, service parameters, resource capacity, finding out how, estimating the number of machines of different capacities you need, the roles you want to put them into, all of that stuff. Then the deployment itself, orchestrating the actual putting of the bits onto the machines according to the roles that you want each machine to have, configuring the services, and then doing some checks at the end to make sure that it's actually all worked in the way you hoped and what we've ended up with is a functional cloud. And then the, the final part is ongoing operations. There's some conversation this morning about the difference between deployment and day two, uh, which is a very important distinction between getting the thing to exist in the first place and then being able to scale it out, deal with the hardware of the things, expand services as customer, uh, customer demand increases and so on. Triple O aims to support an ongoing operation in both the world and where that will get into. A very quick summary of the bits of OpenStack that we are reusing for our use case. So, what we have on the left here is a subset of the core services which make up a useful OpenStack, and this is the content in which they're typically used, which is all about deploying. Workloads and virtual machines. So, in the ordinary use case, Nova provides command and control services for computing nodes. It orchestrates uh, many of the virtual machines. It's the other of the Nova stack which receives the request for the virtual machine of a certain size with a certain set of characteristics and then places it somewhere on the street. Neutron network management. It sets up uh, virtual networks for VMs, it creates floating IPs with NAPs and external traffic goes through to internal hosts. So Glance is an image repository. Whenever VMs are deployed by OpenStack, typically the VM OS image itself comes out of Glance and Glance has all of these images and supporting metadata and users can specify the image they want to have and that's part of the image. Skip ironic for reasons that we're going to talk about. Then there's heat. Heat is an orchestration engine. It was initially designed on very similar lines to uh, Amazon's cloud formations, but it's sort of extended beyond that now. And it allows you to define complex or simple applications which 
you want to have put out onto your cloud. So when you've got, say, a multi-tier application with a database backend, and there's an application server and web front end where they all need to be able to scale on each other, heat allows you to define that collection of machines as a single entity and deploy it, and heat has other kind of features to do with scaling out and fixing multi-application deployments when they go wrong. All of these, in the way that I've just described them, are core open stack components which are used in an awful lot, if not every case, where people are putting their jobs in the cloud. What Triple O does, which is the open stack on open stack part, is use those same components, but use them as the infrastructure and the tooling for deploying and managing OpenStack itself. So, to be more specific about that, we've got the same sets of services, but in this case, we are deploying onto bare metal machines, actual physical infrastructure, the machines that are going to be your production mode, OpenStack instance. In this case, Nova is providing the control service for deployment onto physical hardware. Uh, the Nova Schedule still does matching of flavors, which basically are a recipe to say I want the machine to have this much RAM and this many calls or whatever. It still matches those flavors against and, and makes a scheduling decision about where your job should be deployed. But what's actually being deployed is uh, a physical well, no, The physical machine is not being deployed at all, it's just a physical machine is being selected. Neutron is setting up networking again, but in this case it's um, great ports and root, creating ports and routes to allow physical machines to connect to each other. In some cases, uh, Neutron will do actual physical switch configuration where it has SDM plugins for particular supported hardware. Glance is playing the same role of containing OS images and when the user defines their, their cloud deployment. Part of that definition matches against a particular image in the clouds and that's, that's the software that actually gets put on the machine. Now, I'm not going to skip ironic on this, this run through because in this actual open standard case, ironic is absolutely fundamental. Ironic is another open stack project and it is all about managing actual physical servers and making the bare metal available in a cloudy way so as a service. So the ironic explains is an API, it lets you put an OS onto a machine, power cycle machines, and sort of do the life cycle round trip stuff that um, is typically done with VMs all the time in the cloud, but it, it, there are actual physical machines behind what ironic does. And finally heat. Heat is doing the orchestration of the, of the open stack deployment and as I said earlier when people are using heat in a sort of typical, typical case on open stack we define a multi-node application and something about the relationships between the nodes which ports need to be accessible and so on. In our case we do exactly the same thing but what heat has within its entire definition is all the attributes of the production open stack infrastructure that you're going to deploy so that the, the heat application application payload is your real open stack. So you end up with a fairly complex and rich set of heat templates to define an awful lot of that service placement and so on. <coughs> Excuse me. So moving on to the deployment flow. Just a quick time check, I don't know where I over. So, in case I haven't laboured this point heavily enough yet, we have two clouds in this scenario. The, what we call the undercloud is the simple command machine, which is the installer, effectively, for your free will cloud, your actual production cloud. The undercloud is a persistent instance. It's, um, it's not just an installer. Um, like I said, Triple O also covers other data operations, so the undercloud continues to be available and continues to exist after your install is finished. And if the undercloud is the same means by which you add new hardware, scale the whole thing out, and so on. So the undercloud is where the services that I just ran through 
of a rally, and it's only actually accessible and available to cloud operators. It's not something that any old person can come along and say, I think I'll have a cloud resource. It is your management interface for the overcloud, and the overcloud is your actual payload. This is why you're doing this. This is the thing that users will consume. It's typically going to be able to scale up to a large number of machines and have multiple tenants and so on. Um, it didn't take long for the engineers having worked through this idea of putting OpenStack on top of OpenStack to say, well, could you put OpenStack on top of that or could you do it all on top of OpenStack? And there was a project for a small while called um, Quadruplo, which was about using virtual machines to simulate the bare metal that you then do the deployment. And, uh, it's actually quite a useful project because it makes you try this stuff out if you haven't done a lot of hardware, but it became a bit ridiculous in terms of iterations of OpenStack. So it eventually got renamed into something a bit more accessible. So that's Triple O in a nutshell, and now I'll talk a little bit more about how it actually works in a particular case of deploying two machines. <clears throat> so, the deployment flow. In the simplest case, you, have, you get yourself some hardware. Um, set of machines, wrapped up, wired, ready to go. The first thing that needs to, to happen is to identify which one of the machines is going to be the management mode. This is the, the undercloud, the installed mode, it's also the operational interface for day two stuff, and this is where all the stuff happens. That machine is installed with the triple O software itself, which is a cut down special purpose OpenStack instance. Like I said earlier on, it's got Nova, it's got Heat, it's got Glance, it's got Ironic, it's got Neutron. One machine ready to treat the other machines as, as cloud resources effectively. Having got that first machine, the next step is to get all of the other machines and register them with the first one. The registration is about telling Ironic, the service I mentioned earlier on, which makes actual physical machines appear as a service much like VMs, letting Ironic know about these machines, where they can be found and how they're managed, which is really about the IPMI interface and the credentials. So, uh, Dell machines have track cards, HP machines have ILO, various different vendors have different implementations of BMC interfaces whereby machines can be remotely power cycled, attributes of machines can be modified, and so Triple O needs to know about that because that's the channel that it's going to use to re image machines and whatever else needs to be done with it. Once the hardware has been registered, Triple O is able to inspect it, which is really what happens with it for the inspection is the machines are power cycled via IPMI so that they reboot and they reboot onto a RAM disk, which boots on each machine, runs a whole load of uh, benchmarking tests and gathers fundamental information like the number of calls and the number of discs, disk size and so on. All of that information is harvested by the managers and posted into a service called Ironic Inspector, which is running on the uh, Triple O node. And that gives Triple O all the information it needs to have about what hardware exists and what attributes it has. Having inspected the hardware, networking needs to be configured. There are multiple ways that networks can be set up from very simple to very complex, where we have, a, we have support for a thing called network isolation, where individual types of traffic, the use sort of management traffic and the tenant traffic and the storage uh, traffic is what can all be sent across different networks, either discrete VLANs or a shared NIC or across different NICs. However, you know, users want to set up their network and we have quite a lot of flexibility, but that needs to be defined. Once that is done, one of the machines which is going to be the first controller in the overcloud needs to be 
selected and a couple of compute notes. We have support for five different roles at the moment that we can put into the machine. The machine is either going to be a controller where it runs most of the open stack and it's also a keystone, neutral, glance if you have, uh, and so on. Or it can be a compute node, in which case it's going to run, um, it's going to host VMs, it's going to run KVMs, doing a We also have the ability to specify the machine should be storage machines for, <coughs> excuse me, either Swift or Clouds, or set. So in the simple case here, part of what's being defined on the, on the, on the triple O node is a simple set of roles, one controller, two compute nodes. There is some amount of validation that we do prior to the deployment. Um, in the process, switching momentarily from talking about triple O to talking about Red Hat and our productizing of this stuff, one of the things that we have found in going out and actually working through this process for real customer deployments is that it pays to integrate as much validation as we can into the workflow. The definition of everything about the, the other cloud, where the service is going to live, how they're going to talk to each other and so on, is complex and misconfigurations, so a VLAN which isn't actually tagged on a physical port on a switch which ends up breaking the whole thing. Uh, it, it, it helps to find those things as early as, as possible so we have a set of validations which will look at all sorts of things that have been defined and make sure that they're actually going to work in practice. Then there's the deployment. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, in this case, the, the machines are actually given their roles, which is, excuse me, uh, basically a heat operation, a heat stack is deployed, the machines are given the OS image that matches the role, all of the services are started, the parameters which are, which were defined associated with the services, are pushed to the node which lets the puppet on the nodes to consume the parameters, configure the services, that thing gets deployed. Going beyond that simple case, the, um, the next thing is just to do a more scalable, highly available architecture. In this case, we've got multiple racks of machines, an increasing number of compute nodes, and three controller nodes. The, we can support only deploying a single controller node um, with triple O which is quite useful if you've got a small amount of hardware to play around with. But for actual real production use cases, it would be far more likely that users would deploy a highly available configuration where they put all the controller services on three nodes and then we use Pacemaker and HA proxy to do HA management across the services so you haven't got a single point of faith because this red one here is your triple O under cloud node, which isn't actually customer facing. It's kind of essential because it's how you do your management, but it's not customer facing. But everything else is your actual deployed production multi million dollar revenue generating infrastructure. So, highly available services and some amount of resilience becomes extremely important. So in this example, we are just scaling up a bit further by having more and more computers, which obviously means that larger numbers of VMs can be run and can come and more users can work at the same time. Turning to the features that exist in Triple O, some of the things which were completed at the end of um, Kilo or slightly after that, APOs. One of the big things about Triple O one of the reasons why I like it, think it makes sense, is that we are reusing OpenStack services as our installer and our management tool, which has a couple of advantages. For people 
really want to pick it up and use it, it means that the, the services that they're using as the management tool are the same open stack services that they, they want to get to, which means that you don't have to learn some new vendor specific set of tooling just to do the install. Knowledge that you have from using Triple O is directly applicable to your actual day, day job of managing the production over cloud because it's the same APIs, it's the same services, and vice versa. And also for the development of Triple O, it inherits all of the improvements that happen in the vibrant community that is open stack development. You know, Nova, or Ironic, or Neutral, or whatever, it's a new features and new capabilities in open stack. They automatically show up in our in our management project because it's the same thing. So it has a set of APIs. We have uh, command line tools, which you mentioned there. We also have a web UI. We have a lot of integration from an external management project called uh, ManageIQ. Those REST APIs, as you guys are sure are well aware, uh, the OpenStack REST APIs are pretty robust and capable. So those are the APIs for Triple O. The command line operations I already mentioned. Ready state. Ready state is an important operation. This is one of the things that we've been working on in the context of Ironic. Um, you can't just find that there is a physical machine in your data center and start using it for a particular purpose. There's a whole lot of setup that has to be done before you put the OS on it. Depending on what role the machine is going to have, there are BIOS settings that need to be one way or the other. Uh, virtualization extensions want to be enabled or disabled. Disk arrays need to be built and set up, uh, set a certain way. And Ironic and Triple O are using Ironic has the ability for some hardware, particularly Dell hardware so far as we've done most of the work, to actually manage the ready state as well. So you find this machine and you decide it's going to be a compute node, you go to the BIOS and set all the right things in the appropriate way. That's all happens as part of the automatic deployment flow. Uh, hardware matching, picking the right machines out of the inventory based on the capabilities we have support for, post deployment validation. HA configuration with pacemaker, I already mentioned, and then the scaling resource capacity. That's a day two operation. That is using the under cloud to redeploy your heat stack or update your heat stack to make the cloud a bit bigger. Effectively, the same thing can be done to shrink it, obviously, uh, if you want to take out the of the for as much as you Other features that we have right now. Uh, set integration, the ability to either um, to deploy a set server or to hook into an existing set deployment for external storage, uh, the ability to integrate with an external hardware load balancer, part of defining how you want your overcloud to be set up. You can specify that there is this external load balancer where the services will use it. Hardware integration via Ironic, I already talked about. Network integration is about the ability to work with existing networks. In, in, in an ideal case, as engineers create a deployment tool, we like to think, well, everything will be brand new, we'll just tell the customers this is how things need to work, everything will be fine. In reality, customers have existing infrastructure that they want to reuse, you have a set of network operators, you have an established way of doing things, and what's needed is to integrate uh, OpenStack or anything else into an existing framework and Triple O allows the network isolation I mentioned earlier to work with a customer's approach to networks. A huge area which has been a lot of work recently and this is one of the areas where the difference between simple proof of concept an actual real customer environment really becomes an issue is updates and particularly upgrades, upgrading between OpenStack versions. And as you know, there's a new major OpenStack release every six months, there's a lot of new features. It's very important that people have an upgrade path when, whenever they choose to actually execute on it. Allowing for Actual customer deployments with complex network topologies and highly available 
services and clusters and so on, allowing for those things to be upgraded from one version to another with minimal disruption and maximal automation has been a real engineering challenge, but it's something that exists in triple mode. The other thing that makes that a real challenge is uh, integrations of third-party components. If people have their own particular hardware and storage controls or whatever they want to bring into the deployment, then that makes the upgrades a good deal harder as well. A lot of the work recently on Triple O has been around making upgrades actually work. The, the kind of upgrading the kind of deployments that real customers have. We also added support for IPv6. Um, not a lot of OpenStack components necessarily have robust IPv6 support integrated uh, um, today. Triple O does IPv6 based deployments and can upgrade them. At the moment, we can either have networking to be IPv6 or IPv4. The ability to have a, what's called a dual step where you can mix and match <coughs> and so we we'll move on to. Oops, sorry, let's come back. The other big feature that we added based on demand from customers, particularly large scale telecommunications customers, is uh, STLS SSL support, the ability to have all of the API endpoints for both the overcloud and the undercloud be encrypted. And there's some notes on the slide which I won't repeat about options around it's difficult management either generating themselves or using third party certificates and so on. But that was a, a, another large recent addition to Triple O. Um, container as computer, everybody loves containers. Containers is uh, getting a huge amount of attention and we are not an exception. In the most recent release of Triple O, we have the option for for the computer specifically, rather than just putting an OS image which contains all the services, Nova and Nova and KVM and so on, optional users can deploy RHEL or CentOS Atomic as their base underlying OS and then put all of the services out in a set of containers which are run on top of Docker. Um, we're going to extend that. One of the big advantages of containerization for this use case is it makes rolling back a good deal simpler. I don't know how many of you experience systems administrators, but if you do update to RPM based distributions, uh, it's never been simple to, to revert a complex set of updates. But containerization obviously makes that a far easier task because you're moving from one image to another, it's quite easy to revert. It also lets you. Um, mix what would otherwise be incompatible versions of libraries and so on. Uh, so containerization is something that is in triple there's, there's going to be more. Last couple of things that I need to finish in a moment, stuff that is coming up. Composable roles is the ability to make the roles that you put on the machine much more flexible. I talked before about control and compute, swift and glance, storage roles, and that's about it. We want to make it so that the roles can really be anything that user requires. Uh, a dedicated neutral controller is, is a likely case for that. Split stack is about separating out the management of the hardware and getting the, all of your physical machines ready to use, making that a separate operation for deployment and configuring the OpenStack service. Once we have that done, you could do the first stage, get your hardware ready, and then potentially use something else entirely for the second stage of orchestrating the services, maybe Kubernetes and a bunch of containers. So that's going to allow a lot of flexibility of approach. We've got a UI coming, and then further down the road, a single open cloud managing a array of open clouds, HA in the cloud, which is really about putting it across multiple machines, more containerization, and um, bare metal to tenant support, which is a whole other can of worms. I have to finish there, I'm afraid. There's a bunch of URLs here which uh, tell you where to find out more about Triple O and RDO, which is the um, OpenStack distribution which Triple O tends to work most immediately with. As I said at the beginning, it's an um, upstream open source project. It's part of the OpenStack community and absolutely welcomes contributions of all kinds. 
And that is about my time, I think. So, that's it. I think, thank you very much indeed.